Hello, my name is Justin, and I'm the co-host of Tech Transit Talks, a podcast made by the Tech Transit Association. And I'm Alexi, and I'm also the other co-host of this very same podcast made by the very same Tech Transit Association. Yeah. All right, so today we are going to be talking about the famous, or maybe infamous, depending on who you talk to, IND Queens Boulevard Live. Island's Dream. Island's Dream. Yeah, we have history and implications to talk about. We have a lot of what what proposals that were dropped, and then we and then we want to talk about the, what the future holds for QBL and where do we go from here. How can we improve service? So let's just dive in. Yep. All right. So this is a story properly. It starts way back in nineteen. Uh, it's that even nineteen tens. I don't remember exactly when this was. But it was originally proposed in nineteen twenty five. Starting before the QBL, I think it was yeah. in the 1900s, um, the 19 aughts, that Red Mike Highland was, um, I think he was a train operator on a BMT elevated, and he almost ran over his supervisor, and he got fired, and he was so mad about that that when he became mayor in the 1920s, I've heard bad things about his administration, but whatever, not the point. Yeah. Um, he decided. F those guys. And so he decided to make a city ran independent IND system to compete with the private companies, which are stuck at a five cent fare. So Queens Boulevard Line was, yeah, it did. It it successfully bought them out. Yeah, put the city in debt, but it it did very well. Stations are, the stations for that time held up pretty well. Oh, yeah. You you know what I say? The IND, sorry, the IRT was built small. The BMT was built with crack, and the IND was built well. That's yeah. basically how it breaks down. <laughs> um, with their large mezzanines. Yeah, large mezzanines. Um, and lots of provisions for expansion. Anyway, yeah. so Queens Boulevard Line was one of the uh, branches of the original IND first system. You got 8th Avenue, 6th Avenue, Central Park West. And you've got, uh, what is that? Uh, there's the Inwood Branch. Uh, Grand Concourse Branch, right? Um, Queens Boulevard in Brooklyn. You've got uh, Fulton, Crosstown, and uh, oh, it's South Brooklyn. Um, so, I have a original system. Queens Boulevard was a nice long swath right out into the middle of like Queens, traveling through both denser areas like Jackson Heights and into less developed areas like Forest Hills. It's pretty busy. Yeah. Originally, the line was was local. It was like the which it was the G only, which at the time was was the GG service, which like GG good game. I'm sorry, I should not be making that. Which local riders didn't like. So, 1955, they made they made a good made they made some changes to that, and then it became very busy. That's yeah. that's a that's a BS summary, but well, it was really always busy. But yeah, yeah, but it, it was a much only busier one by local, then. And that local only goes to Brooklyn. So you had a like, chance to, to go to Manhattan. Nobody liked that. Like that. Would, like I would just, I would just know Bob. I would just say, no, I'm taking the Flushing line. Screw that. I would transfer. I, I have no problem yeah. with transferring. I live in Brooklyn, but like I have no problem with transferring. But whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so these people are cranky, and so the city went ahead and built the 11th Street cut, which connected uh, BMT Broadway lines, and forever effed up the BMT Broadway line. Um by forcing them to split service in bad places. But yep. it helped it, Queens Boulevard. It gave them a direct... Appease the riders. Appease the riders. Well, thing is that just, it more moved the pain to other Yeah. It, and as a Brooklyn rider, this pisses me off. But it made sense at the time. Um, whatever, not going to get into it. Um, yeah. So they connected Broadway line trains. It worked pretty well. Now you got the R or the N, depending on the time and maybe other services too. I think it was even called the E at one point or the EE. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, so I got Broadway trains running on Queens Boulevard, uh, providing local service into Manhattan. 1968 program for action included several planned expansions like the uh, 63rd street tunnel and, and the Archer Avenue line. The line. L-I-E. Yep. LAE. Yeah. We got a whole list of them, but we're going to go into this later. Many, yeah. many expansions. Um, 2001 tunnel to nowhere yeah that so was hooked. that line, qbl got hooked up to it providing the 63rd street with with a connection to queens boulevard which i think was pretty useful but oh yeah that, that's good and that allows us to solve yeah so the 11th street cut at the time was important but once you have the 
uh, 63rd Street Tunnel, you can retire it from service because you have four tracks going into a four track line, which means you are good to go. Um, Anyway, um, you just skipped a little bit mentioning the Archer Avenue extension is also done, which added a second uh, railroad north terminal, although it's really east um, for the E train, splitting the E and the F and giving more coverage footprint, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't really know. That was the first stage of a greater expansion of the south, uh, Southeast Queens line, and that would have been very useful. Um, Had it been extended. Yeah, as is, it's just sort of there. It does a couple good connections to the LARR and some buses, but it just sort of goes three stops and just ends, and it's basically paralleling the existing lines. So yeah, nice to have. It, could have, it could have used a lot more potential. I, I believe there would, would have been a connection via, via the LARR, but for whatever but then they the program for action just didn't really happen as it should have been a lot of plans were reduced and therefore yeah. and therefore a lot of grand plans were just thrown off the window exactly so i mean you know, that's the, what happened the tail tracks still loop around they could still yeah they do but it. it's not but like it's just there to store trains so they could just build a portal i still think but whatever i'm getting ahead of us so yeah, the portal 2001 with the uh, 63rd street tunnel we now have the F traveling via that, and then that also forms the V line to take the F spot in the 53rd Street Tunnel. So we've got some uh, changing service patterns to it. Otherwise, the hanging thing and ridership the entire time, I should add, has been very, very high. This line is always packed to the gills. So in 2011, a lot of service cuts came in. The V, what served the V now became the M, and the G was no longer extend, no longer served the, Q, the Queens Boulevard line. Up until this point, the G had been steadily cut back, but it was still running night times, I believe. But in yeah. 2011, it was finally axed. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, the, obviously, there were some benefits by, br- bringing, the, by bringing the M up 6th Avenue, like... Um, those who are those who are going from Middle Village, they finally got direct access to Midtown, which is pretty cool. But no more, but no more G really left a sour taste in some people's mouths. And yeah. th- and in order to compensate for that, they had a moving walkway at Court Square. So you know, at least that made life somewhat easy. And you know, I did I did a silver lining. And then they removed that seven years later. Bingo. Really, they removed that? Yeah, they removed it at Court Square. The walkway it's no longer there. You ha- you have to you actually you have to actually walk. Can you believe it? I'm sorry. I don't live in Queens. I don't think I've ever actually used the Queens Boulevard line, so I don't know any of this stuff, practically speaking. Yeah. Wow, that is very stupid. Um, yeah. Um, the G, I should add, even though removing it may be good because it ultimately serves what commuters want, but it also really stings because that removes one of your main cross-town connections. And as we all know, cross-connections are what makes the 21st century city tick. Mm-hmm. Anyway, oh, yeah, and now uh, the, the next and latest big milestone in the Queens Boulevard line history is the installation of CBTC signals. Um, yeah, CBTC. it hasn't, I believe, delivered exactly what's promised, but it's still a work in progress. So that's okay. Yep. Um, and it's, I believe, significantly improved headways and service along the small sections it has been acted upon. And CBDC, for those who don't know, is a different sys- uh, signaling system that involves having little transmitters on every train that allow the onboard computers to uh, calculate exactly the minimum distance behind trains you can have instead of stationary block signals like they used to have. Yep. So more efficiency and more trains. Still working out the kinks, but it's very good and it's starting to work. Arguably, it's actually pretty hard to install to install CBTC in, in, in a line like QBL, where um, the Flushing line and the Canarsie line they have CBTC. But what makes them different is that they're that those lines are self sustaining, which means they don't really have services that branch out onto other onto other on, onto other t- track territory. So that makes it easy for um, say the Flushing line, even though that was quite delayed. But for something like QBL, not only did you have to change the entire fleet, which 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 results in a yard swap, as everyone know, but it's general, but it's generally just a hassle having ha- be given how interline it is. So maybe it's not all the MTA's fault, but you know, it's it it's still pretty. It it was still not what it should have been. Perhaps it's not a deal, but if you ask me, you got to do it sometime. And it's good yeah. that they're taking the bull by the horns, targeting one of the most overcrowded areas. Yeah, I think it's a good place to start, and ultimately a good choice. Although I am surprised they haven't done the J. Um, mm-hmm. because that's another sort of. 
it's the irony because the J train was one of the reasons what the what if there was an incident on the Williamsburg Bridge, bridge back in the nineties, which resulted yep. in a lot of speeds being slowed down, and now they're the ones with the, without that that won't get signal upgrades. Yeah, it's it's, I mean, it's very ironic in my I'll opinion. They'll do it eventually, but you know it it, it only interlines with the uh, M, I think. Although yeah, they, the and track, the M has one six. They interline it with the L, and I uh I would stand having an L via J service, Canarsie. Hmm. Broad Street would be very cool, even if ultimately useless, it would still be very cool. Yeah. Um, but whatever, I'm getting off topic. Um, whatever. So CBTC, Queens Boulevard, uh helping to address growing capacity, but still not doing it. And because Queens, as we all know, is very underserved, Queens Boulevard is like the um titanium plated backbone of the entire borough, and it's heavily overstrained, so this is good to help fix it but it's not fixed yet and well it's the one of the two backbones um the other's the flushing line well yeah but the flushing line's gonna war skims the northern coast and the queens will already goes right through the middle yeah but both are but if you take the seven express on uh, on the pm rush which i have done on numerous occasions you you could yeah it's i think you would you could say that the seven is also a pretty good backbone even though some executives one executive of, of our club doesn't like it yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Yep. All right, so draft proposals of the Queens Boulevard line, many and varied. Amongst them were um, 79th Street Tunnel, which sort of emerged uh, unique amongst draft proposals, obviously, because it dropped. Yeah. Um, but it was moved south and turned into the 63rd Street Tunnel. Um, yeah. because I, th- I think they found the rock they were boring through was untenable or something. I don't know. Anyway, the Vince Duke and Reagan, uh second system map does a pretty good job of showing where it would sort of plug in uh, to the Queens Boulevard line. And so it would have a little bit of a different configuration than it currently does. It, it terminated in the G train early, but still confusingly on the local tracks, it doesn't seem to, pardon me, very good arrangement, but whatever. Anyway, it never happened. And it's not gonna happen now. The sixty third tunnel, sixty uh, third street exists. Yeah, that's one of that's one of, that's one of the proposals, and uh, we now know it as sixty third street tunnel. Um, there was a lesser known proposal, which I'm pretty sure most people, some people know about, but not everyone. It's and you would and if at first thought I was like, oh, I thought this was something for the seven, but no, it's that it was actually for Queens Boulevard line. It it would have involved. Um, diverging from the Queens Boulevard line near Woodhaven Boulevard, and then they would have ran it across the LIE to, to Casino Boulevard at Queens College. And then later they would have ran it to Fresh Meadows and Bayside. So, you know, they would have, they there was a planned widening of the expressway around the time that it was being proposed. So had the expressway been widened, um, which I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure if it was, they would have just built the line along with it. And, you know, they would have placed the subway tracks under, they would have placed subway tracks like just under it so that, you know, it doesn't, screw up the express with the neighborhoods and then that's where the provisions for the Woodhaven Boulevard stations came in. Um, it would have Woodhaven Boulevard would have been an express station to handle all the northeast, northern northeast and Queens commuters. So you know it was actually a very it was actually a pretty good proposal for this time. Yes. Um obviously this, well it never happened. Yeah this is one of my personal favorite proposals because the LIE yeah. line just goes straight through a lot of important areas. Um if yeah. it were me though I would do this a little differently. I wouldn't have it be a Queens Boulevard branch. I would have run it all the way along the LIE through the, even through the underpopulated areas because yeah. you can develop them or alternately, if you keep them as industrial facilities, you increase access. And as to the cemeteries, yeah, okay, but whatever. We don't talk about that. Um, oh, come on. That's you know, wild. maybe people want to see their dead relatives. Somebody's buried there. Got to have yeah. a train there. So if it were me, I would just run it all the way along the LIE, but even a branch is good, and you can always just add provisions for future expansion. So yeah. if you're going to build an expansion today, this is on my short list of things that need to be done. All right, next up, the uh, Rockaway Beach Branch. This proposal actually exists today in the form of the Queens Link Project, which we'll get to later. Um, but this is basically just, there's an abandoned LAR right-of-way. And back in the day, the IND was competing with the LARR. So they wanted to either build a, uh, buy up the LARR one or build a com- uh, competitor. And so their plans included both, I believe, building tracks alongside and also just building onto it. But since it was abandoned, building alongside became irrelevant and um, using the right of way became the uh, <clears throat> prime strategy, pardon me. Um, yeah. And so this proposal would use that to run a line all the way down 
Thick Queens as the second crosstown and even into the Rockaways, providing more Rockaway coverage to areas further north um, and more borough interconnectivity, which is, as we've already established, is a good thing. Uh, Manhattan-centric subways, how I hate them. I don't oh, wait. Hate well, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. That's that's a strong word, but we do. We it does bring up the 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 it does bring up the fact that we do have to build subways for, that serve the outer boroughs better than it serves Manhattan. The G is not enough. The G is not enough. Yeah, but we've had a we've we've had a good proposal regarding um the the LA the northeastern Queens LIE corridor, which or which which is actually the outer roads are called Horse County Expressway, but you know we the seven line could also adequately serve it if we really wanted it to. We, if although I'm pretty sure people would be split on giving the seven or Queens Boulevard yeah, no, line. That's it. bad. Just no. Yeah. yeah this the seven. Seven's already got a job to do. I support extending it into uh, College Point because I don't think that would like too much additional traffic and maybe Bayside. But really, after a certain point, that's um, a bit much, really. Yeah. If it were up to me, I would extend a train along. Well, actually, hang on. This one ties to a different thing we haven't mentioned yet. So we'll do that when we get to it. In the meantime, yeah. next up is. Okay, so that brings us to um, one of well, one of the things that was dropped from the 1968 plan for action, and that was a line that would have went to that would have went to Southern Queens, which would have utilized the 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 Far Rockway LAWR branch all the way to Springfield Gardens, because that was what they proposed the 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 Archer Avenue extension to be. Obviously, we know it. Obviously, we know it as just a short little branch along Parsons Boulevard, but. That's where, but that's where the provision of Jamaica Center comes in. You know, the little where it curves a little bit, right? Onto, and that's where they store trains. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this I is am, one of my favorite proposals. It's sad that all my yeah. favorites get dropped, but that would have been, and still would be, real clutch in a massive dead zone. And unlike yeah. Central Queens dead zone, it's not most of the cemeteries. A lot of people live here, and a lot of people. Yeah. And oftentimes they're kind of hammered down by bus commutes or in or they're they're blocked by expensive L.A. double R fares. It's a real shame, but that they have to either endure a bus ride or have, or getting or not being able to put put dinner on the table. But you know that's where that's again why why this is one of our favorite proposals because it, it it's genuinely beneficial. We have the infrastructure there, like we like we have the L.A. double R. We could potentially use it. So why not, honestly? Yep. All right. Um. Last thing I think unless there's something else that we've forgotten, um, is the old Long Island uh, Railroad Super Express. This is another one of my uh, favorites because this acts a backbone for so many other things. Basically, there's a couple of abandoned tracks along the Long Island Railroad's main line. And if you just fill those trackways with subways, ka-ching, you can bypass the main uh, Queen Boulevard line. Basically, turn a four-track line into the six lines and plug it back in at Forest Hills um, and since there's four tracks in there, you can now fill all four of those tracks, four tracks worth of trains. Yeah. Uh, if it were up to me, which is not, but we don't talk about that. It could I would, be. Could be, exactly. I would run it over the, uh, what's it called? The Port Washington part way. And then when the Port Washington splits, I would split it and have two services on this. One service continues along Queens Boulevard and goes up to 179th, or really mm -hmm. we pass that if we expand it. And the other one, goes up port washington therefore supplementing the seven and then the seven can go to college point this goes to bayside this is what i mentioned earlier i'm going to cover it here and that way the seven has more stuff to do but not too much more stuff to do because as we know it's already extremely important yeah it's not even four helps tracks that, um helps help that um and we can add a couple more stations in elmhurst and corona um and that just does that well uh, I just realized, I think there's one more drop post we forgot about, which is extending it past 179th Street, just the main Queens Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, another good thing that would be helped if there was a um, local line along Super Express to supplement the F Express going forward in a local express pair um, further along there. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, but, you know um, I think what might what might have made them anxious at the time was the fact that you know you're literally, you're literally having running the railroad and the subway along 
you know, kind of next to each other. But honestly, I don't. I honestly, I would like to see at least us at least try because we we all it is somewhat possible. We have this. They have the same track gauge, so you know we can even just take over the Fort Washington. Yeah, don't just take the double R off it. Yeah, uh, we can uh, make everything Jamaica centric. No, I, oh, you're talking about the southern extension. I'm talking about the northern extension. It doesn't go into Jamaica. Um, no, I'm talking about because the Port Washington doesn't stop at Jamaica. That's why. Oh, I see. You're saying not make it with the Jamaica Central. Oh. Uh -oh. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, Where do we go from here? Yeah, that's the big question. Um, well, first off, Queens Link. Queens Link. Please. Queens Link is a proposal uh, headlined by a number of luminaries, including Andrew Lynch. The uh, you know Dan Schnook and Ragan. Yep. Which is basically Andrew Lynch, but yeah. Yep. Um, and this proposal aims to combine previous park and railroad proposals along the Rockway Beach Branch. Rockway Beach Branch. Back. Alliteration. Anyway, um, extend the M train or something else. But for their proposals, it's the M train along there, which opens up terminal capacity to bring the G back to the Queens Boulevard, providing cross borough connectivity, and with the M. To the Rockaways, we now have another Crossborough connectivity link. There's another north south transfer corridor. And we also get more trains in the Rockaways. You can remove the Rockaway shuttle. And now it's easy to get from more northern areas in Queens to Rockaways. So just good all around. More connectivity knits it together, and the infrastructure is there. So it really won't cost that much. Yeah. Relatively right. speaking. I think they clocked it at $4 billion, which is a lot. But but it's not impossible if we could if we could definitely if we can do the Interborough Express then there yeah. is some there it's is some than Second Avenue subway and frankly uh, in this day and age we should be able to throw a four billion dollar public works budget down every now and again this is America for crying out loud we're like the wealthiest <laughs> nation in the world and this is the largest city in the wealthiest nation in the world we should be able to throw around a nice public works project now and then especially one that's economically beneficial. Exactly. I'm, I, yeah. they've definitely, I'm pretty sure they've done the research that it will pro provide long-term yeah. economic benefits. Anyway, check out their website, Queenslink, great proposal. That is on the short list of things to be done. Um, other than that, I really think the best way to go with respect to Queens, I mean, uh, Queens Boulevard. Boulevard, yes, is just resurrecting the old proposals. Um, yeah. We have a, we have a ton of great extensions that would that would be more beneficial than slashing the the price of of an L I double R ticket. We have and we have the infrastructure that's there to do so. We've the provisions that we've built early on was they they make us more prepared for something if so for any for any changes within what's what's around Queens Boulevard. Like I think you know that we have provision tracks for provisions to make Woodhaven Boulevard an express station. Some people are torn about that. I personally think it's a good idea. We have it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And we can indeed, in fact, um, and it won't be easy, but there is possibility to to serve to serve Queens further. We can we could we could re resurrect the LI East. We could re we could re resurrect the, the Long Island Expressway line or Horse Harding if you for crying out loud. That could that could you know take some that could take some people off the bus and onto the trains. People already take the bus to the train. Why not just why not just take the train? Take the train to the plane. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> take the train to the plane. I took the plane recently, but we didn't take the train there, and I was mad about that. Yeah, Whatever. not gonna get into that. Um, I said that so many times that my parents like stop talking about the goddamn train. <laughs> anyway, um, one other thing I'd like to add, besides the expansions that have already been mentioned, because we've pretty much already gone over though them why they're good and why they should exist now, is. If you look at the capacity, if we add a super express, which we need to because there's so many branches, we could not fit them all otherwise. That's six tracks. There's only two tunnels that feed into it. Well, really, there's three because you've got the 59th, 60th Street tunnel, but that tunnel also feeds Astoria. And if you do the uh, de interlining slash the Guardi extension that I think they should do, that tunnel is doing other, other stuff. It's got other fish to fry. So we have functionally two tunnels, 53rd and 63rd, feeding into six tracks. That's not enough services. So I think we need a new tunnel if we're, if we're really going to build this out all the way. Um, I said 48th Street, but I don't really know. I don't know about much of the uh, exact rock mining uh, in the area. And yeah. 
the details, but that's just where I said, because that's, that's a little further south and everything. And it allows us to tie in uh, and have the tracks travel through Sunnyside Yards. Um, if we're up to me, this new tunnel would have Second Avenue trains. Then you have a service split there. Uh, one of them goes along the li all the way along Long Island Expressway, like I previously stated. Yeah. The other one goes along the Super Express, along the G. Um, and then you have the G go all the way out along Port Washington. The other one folds back in. You have, what is that? You have the N via 63rd and the F. The F does what it currently does. The N goes uh, local along that, most of the way. What I have it do then? I'm trying to remember where I had that branch. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that goes to Rockaway Beach. Maybe it does. Maybe it just ends at Forest Hills. Anyway, then 53rd, you got the E, which does the same thing it does, but the, through Southeast Queens. And the M, maybe the M goes to Rockaway. I don't know. It could go either way. But that way, you've got all the different expansions totaled in, and you've got enough capacity to actually make them all have good frequency. You know, when, when, when every time I'm reminded of the M that potentially going to the Rockways, I always think of it as a kind of like a, 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 a reverse P, letter P. I'm not sure why. Never heard of that. That's it's very interesting. Yeah, maybe I didn't look at the map correctly, but hey, letter P service once. All, hey. all, all, all while adding new transit, new transit connections and job opportunities to the Rockways. Win-win. Well, not really because they're going to be underwater in 15 years, but whatever. Yeah. Come on, 15. Come on. They said they would install all the elevators by what? 2030, 2040, 2050? You'll need them. <laughs> You'll need them. So, you know, if it takes, if it takes however long. The elevated it by it's going to be the only part of the rockways above water by the time they're done with them. <laughs> well, that's true. Unfortunately. That's true. So don't worry. The cars near that's, that's next to a ban the abandoned viaduct will be the reason why. Yes. Well, anyway. I think that we covered most of our topics. Uh, yeah, we got uh, this has been almost 30 minute long, 25 minute long episode. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's much more to say. Yeah. Um, uh, I ride, I used to ride Queens Boulevard a lot. I still do. So, you know, this is one of the things that, I, that I'm more passionate about Queens Boulevard. But with that, it brings us to the end of episode number three for Tech Transit Association's right, Tech guys. Transit Talk podcast. In the in, next in the very in the very club Tech Transit, in the very one school, however you say that, technical high school, in the very in the very in the one technical high school, not one, but you know, the one the matters. one technical high school. It doesn't really matter. But this, Justin out, Alexi, and remember the R train. Is a victim of circumstance. The route is cool. It just needs help. Just like us. <laughs> just like you, maybe. I am mentally healthy. All right, Not guys. Either. See you next episode. <laughs>